So we remember, I think it was last year that Hillary Gans came and brought up his video about a lithium battery going through his MRF, causing, I think it was like $1.2 million worth of damage, as I recall. 8.5, okay, like a whole shit ton of money. So Kristen's going to come and talk to us about a different way of handling those lithium batteries. It's going to be about five minutes. You'll be happy with me. Thank you, Rebecca. Hi, my name is Kristen Delalo Sherrill, and I work for California Electronic Asset Recovery as their uh, marketing consultant. I've actually been out of the industry for a couple of years um, at home trying to raise a little person to not be a dictator, and I'm not being so successful at that. I'm very happy to be back in the industry. And my has it changed oh, among, amongst adults, exactly. It's changed quite a bit since, since um, I've been back. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about my company and what we do, and then I'm going to tell you how the lithium batteries are affecting our recycling process. Uh, so we are... Uh, in the, we're committed to providing responsible and effective management solutions for disposition of electronics. We actually recycle for, uh, run the recycling program for uh, the University, Berkeley. And um, so our services are logistics, data, security, remarketing, and recycling. And you'd be surprised, but the lithium batteries affect all of those. Um, we were established in 2000, and we're located right outside of Sacramento, and we have actually three facilities on our campus, and we have 80-plus green jobs. Sorry, I'm not with it here. Um, we also recycled over 9,000 tons of electronic waste in 2018, and 10 tons of lithium batteries came out of that. So it's, it's quite a bit. I know in your waste industry, tons, you know, 9,000 tons of things is not a lot. But for us, 10, 10 tons of lithium batteries is a big, big percentage. Um, these are some of the certifications that we carry, and those are grueling, most of them. Some of them are industry. Some of them are just um, environmental certifications. Took us about seven years collectively to get all of those. And most recently, um, we just did went through OSHA's 18,001, uh, 18, and we're now going through on the National Association of Information Destruction um, security certification, and that is grueling as well, but we're almost there. Um, so the way our recycling process works, it's a little bit different than most um, recyc electronic recyclers in California. We have a centrifugal force uh, separation machine. So basically, when things come into our facility, we have to remove all the batteries before they can go through our automated process, which is quite grueling. Um, the way that our machine works, rather than cutting the electronics with knives, it works through centrifugal force. So uh, the, the electronics crash into each other, and through that collision is how the, the materials are liberated. So with, um, and I'm glad I didn't put a video in here. I was going to try. That's good that I didn't do that because I see those weren't working. Um, so through, through that process, you can see that, you know, there's human error. There's area for human error. And if we forget a battery, I mean, that could be very combustible in, in our machine. So, oh, boy, I'm really not. There we go. That's what our... We have three of those now. This, is a, this diagram is a little bit old, but we have a, our first process is the centrifugal force, and then there's magnets, so ferrous metals go one way, non-ferrous goes another, and we have separators and sorters online sorting everything that comes out of the, of the process. But, you know, if we do miss a battery, like I said, it's very important for our workers' health and safety that they're getting all the batteries because they are so very combustible, like w what you were just talking about, the MRF here. I, I read um, recently, I think it was last year, that there was a, a MRF in Jamaica Plains, New York, that it was a five-alarm fire because of a lithium battery, and it almost burned the entire place to the ground. So it's a really, it's a really serious problem. And as we all know, Lithium batteries are literally in everything. I mean, like, the little cards that you get that have lights on them and sing, they're in everything. And there's many lithium batteries that are aftermarket. We're seeing that a lot more and more in the electronics that come through our facility. It's very difficult for our technicians to identify these batteries that look just like your run-of-the-mill uh, AA 
alkaline battery, and it's actually a, a lithium-ion battery. So it's really difficult to um, uh, uh, sort these and know exactly what the chemistries are. So the, those are our problems with processing. Are there incredibly difficult to identify. That's number one. And then number two, they're, they're embedded into the electronics. So they're in, under so many layers and so much glue that it's really difficult. I actually went a couple of weeks ago uh, to, and talked with my head technician, Jose, who takes apart, uh, namely iPads. And if, if we want to repurpose an iPad, it takes him and his technicians approximately 40 minutes to get a lithium battery out, and that's with heat processes. That's if we're going to repurpose it. If we're just going to recycle it, it takes them four or five, four or five minutes. But, I mean, these manufacturers who make these products and, and make them so difficult to recycle is a really, really large frustration, I'm sure, for all of you, but very much so in our industry. Um, Obviously, too, in the, in the field that we're all, most of us are in, when batteries come into our facility and they've already bulged and there's problems, then there's, there's hazards that can escape. So educating the public on how to tape their batteries or how to bring them in is another component um, that is very important. So, and then at our facility, I mean, the amount of time that we spend taping batteries so that we can send them to our downstream recycler, it's, it's enormous. The every, all of the lithium batteries, the terminals have to be taped, of course, and it is a lot of sorting and a lot of taping, and it's a big, big, cumbersome problem in our industry. Um, I'm sure you guys have seen these, these headlines, the consumer product explosions related to lithium batteries, that e-scooter fires soar 300% in 2017. Um, you know, I mentioned the Jamaica Plains fire that happened. There was a train, train car carrying lithium batteries, and it exploded uh, near downtown Houston in 2017. And then this statistic came from Waste 360, and it's pretty close to what we've found. Um, last year in California alone, 65% of the fires in, in the MRFs began with lithium-ion batteries and recycling facilities, which is something's got to be done. Um, I took this from Ryan Fogelman, the fire rover. This shows that since 2017, or sorry, since 2000, yeah, 17, Increased fires have increased 26 percent. That's something's got to be done. It's just it, it's dangerous and it costs so much money. What was it? 8.5 million that it costs the MRF in the Bay Area, where we are. I'm from Sacramento, so sorry if I say that. <clears throat> So we work closely with the California Product Stewardship Council, and they ran a survey in March of 2018, and it, it came out that 56% of the reported fires, which is pretty close in line and in, in, in the statistic in Waste 360, were caused from ba by batteries. Lithium-ion batteries are the largest source of the reported fires, which... Oops. How do I go back? There we go. So what can, what can we do from the recycler, recycling industry to help with the problem of these thermal events? Uh, we need to keep lobbying the manufacturers with CPSC and the bills like AB 1509 that are trying to be passed to, to make these items more easily recyclable. They're so difficult. They obviously don't design it with recyclability in mind. They design with selling more product, and it's got to change. The industry, that they have to change the way that they're designing these products. Um, also, we need to have more consumer education to increase the awareness of proper lithium battery handling and recycling. And um, we're getting ready to create a web page on our site, uh, letting the public know how to tape their lithium batteries before they come in or what to do with them because it, you're not surprised a lot of people don't know. Wow, I'm taking a lot longer than I thought. Um, okay, so supporting bills like AB 1509, uh, which is by Senator Mullen and Berman from San Mateo, this bill would require 
a product with a non-removable rechargeable battery to be, the manufacturer would have to provide product disassembly information to recyclers. That's such an important component and would make our lives much easier. And also, it would require labeling in a conspicuous manner so that consumers could understand. So anyway, I will be here. So if you have any questions about that, um, I'll be around. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>